Hi everyone, it's Lisa with InkinInspirations.com and welcome to our premiere for June 1st, uh, 2023. So uh, summer has officially started and the temperatures are saying that it is summer here in Southeast Texas. And currently when this video goes live, we are making our trek toward uh, Flagstaff, Arizona First, going through Fort Worth, going to stay with our youngest daughter a couple of nights, and then on to Albuquerque, and then from there on to Flagstaff. So with that being said, I wanted to talk about next week um, when we are on our va family vacation. Uh, I, there will not be a live premiere or a live video because I'm going to be enjoying the beautiful sights of uh, the Grand Canyon area. So I wanted to do something special because along with that, my birthday is on June the 4th, this coming Sunday. And so with that being said, I have a special birthday getaway giveaway uh, that I'm doing. And I'm going to extend it starting June the 1st today through the 13th, which is when I am due to be back in Missouri, okay? So there's two ways to be entered into the drawing. I have six different prizes, okay? And you will be able to see those prizes on my blog at inkandinspirations.com beginning uh, Sunday on my birthday, June the 4th, okay? And then it'll go for six days. So two ways that you can be entered to win. If you place an order between the days of June 1st through 13th, with each $25 in product purchased before shipping and tax, you will get one entry for each $25, okay? So there's no limit on that. Then you'll need to check my blog to see when I post the new craft candy. So I'm gonna to try to do it on consecutive days so it will be easy to follow. So that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And you can leave one comment on those craft candy posts each day of those six days, okay? And so then I will draw from those names plus the names of the those that have placed the orders of $25 or more and uh, give away the six prizes. So I'm going to announce that on June the 15th, I'm gonna try to do a live or a premiere on that day on our regularly scheduled Thursday. And um, so, We'll see uh, just a com one comment per blog post, okay? And then I do, I will have a host code, but at the time of this recording, uh, I have not uh, designated that code yet. I'm waiting till closer to June the 1st, and which is today. And so I will try to post that in the description of the video, and it will also be on my blog and on Facebook. Okay, and of course, the offers are only good for U.S. orders through me, Lisa Brown, Ink and Inspirations. Okay, now to go along with that, uh, to help you with your orders, Stampin' Up! is having a designer series paper sale. So between June 1st and 30th, this is all month long, you can save up to 15% off select papers from the annual catalog. And I'm gonna show you what those, those are. It is most of the papers, okay? So let's look. Okay, so right here, we have the Bright and Beautiful and Countryside Inn. All the papers are 15% off. So these two packs, the six by six here and the, the 12 by 12 here, will be $10.62 each, okay? And then here, that delightfully eclectic, that's that huge pack of 48 sheets of paper will be on sale for $25.50, okay? All right, let's go on to this page. Uh, this is Earth and Elegance and Fresh as a Daisy, both 15% off for $10.62 each. 
And then this pack of six by six, it's 40 sheets. Uh, it's regularly $10.50. It's going to be on sale for $8.92, okay? And then over here, we have three more papers, Inked Botanicals, six by six stack. I'll be using that today. The Let's Go Fishing that I used last week and the Less Shops. Those are 15% off, $10.62 each, as well as Masterfully Made. This is beautiful paper. The Stargazing Collection and the Zoo Crew Collection, all for $10.62 a pack, okay? The rest of these are not on sale, just the ones I mentioned here and I'll also have a list of them. Be sure you're on my email list so you can see the list there and download the flyer, okay? All right, let's get started. So since our beautiful paper uh, was on sale, I wanted to do uh, a card design that would um, highlight some of the paper. So we're gonna do a patchwork, um, design super easy it's just some cuts that are one and one quarter inches wide and i've got this i saw this online and i thought i have got to try to do that and so perfect for this time with the paper so i'm going to do some cutting to get started i'm going to get my paper trimmer in here and so all of the strips of paper are going to be one and a quarter inches wide. So I've already made one. So I've got some strips here, but I'm going to cut several more and we can play with the patterns. Now, I will have a couple of more samples that you can see uh, so that you can see how it looks with the different designer papers. Okay, so I'm gonna cut another one and a quarter inch strip. Now, a thing to note is that some of the patterns need to be um, a portrait and some need to be landscape. So let me uh, give you the little recipe here. And I'll try to find a good Sharpie. So that's not one. I, I, here's, this would be a new one. I like the ones with the little fine tip there. Okay, so we need two pieces that are cut one and one quarter by one and one quarter, okay? All right, and so I'm gonna put that right here. We need three pieces, okay, that will be cut two and one half, and here's that one and one quarter again. And these need to be portrait which means if it has a direction, if it's directional, then it needs to go up and down, okay? So there's that. These are gonna be our reminders here, okay? And then we need two pieces that are two and five eighths by one and one quarter, and these need to be landscape. So, you know, many of our papers don't have a specific direction, like this one could go this way or this way, okay? Uh, let me show you. But you see how these little floral print here, if you did it like this and put it sideways, it would be okay, but the stems are here, so you would want this to be portrait or cut it like this, okay? If you're gonna portrait this way, landscape this way. I'll get it right in a minute. Okay, so there are our notes and the recipe. So I am going to go ahead and cut this one in, let's see, I'm gonna cut it in landscape, just, just in case I wanna use it like that. So I'm gonna cut this at one and a quarter. Okay, set that aside. You can see this has the directionality portrait, and so I've got that like that, cut one and a quarter, but this pattern could go either way. Okay, same with this one. 
It's a portrait look here. And this one could go either way. So I've got those two. Let me see what else we wanna put here. Okay, so here is another floral print in Crush Curry. It could go either way, okay? So I'm just gonna cut, so can this plaid here on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and cut and line this up at one and a quarter. It is easier if you have plenty to hold on this side um, to line it up over here. You know, this goes through the one and one half inch. Um, I've got it at one and a quarter. Okay, and I am going to go ahead and cut some more of these, just so I'll have them. So with me, and you know, I've played with this quite a bit. I like to get the little squares uh, cut and what I think I'm gonna use, and sometimes I change my mind. Okay, I'm talking, so I need to get that on the one and the quarter. Sometimes I change my mind and, you know, it just, you just keep cutting the strips if you need more, okay? So, and I have some other little pieces over here too that I can bring into the mix in case I need those, all right? So now, uh, let's talk about what we want for our portrait. So for our portrait, we needed three two and a half by one and a quarter. We already have them cut at one and a quarter. So let's cut some in portrait at two and a half, okay? So we need three of those. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in case I want to use this side. It's ready to go, two and a, two and a half, right? Yep, so I need three. And you can cut more than one sheet of designer paper at a time, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Okay, here's another portrait one. I've got it cut in the portrait direction, and I'm going to line it up at one and a quarter. Nope, that's wrong, Lisa. Two and one half. Okay. So I have these two portraits, and then I'm gonna do one more. Let's see, what can I do? Hmm, I think I'm gonna do this floral. I know it's the back side of that, but I really like that one. So I'm gonna do that um, two and a half. So that'll be three, and maybe we can work with that. So now I need got these let's put that there I need two at two and five eighths by one and a quarter landscape <coughs> excuse me so I'm gonna do this crush curry floral at two and five eighths so here's the half and here is the five eighths so there's one and let's see what else do I want to do here I like this one Kind of looking at my other card because I played with it quite a bit to get it with the patterns that I liked. Okay, two and five eighths. Okay, so there's two at two and five eighths by one and a quarter, and then my three. And now I need my little um, squares, the one and a quarter inch squares. So let's see what I want to do here. I'm gonna flip these over and see. Um, okay, I'm gonna do this one at one and a quarter. This is in Calypso Coral. And then there's one. Let's see what else am I gonna use. I'm gonna flip these over here and see what I have. So those are all the little florals there and that. I think I wanna use this. I thought I had cut that piece, but it looks like I've used it. So let me go again at one and a quarter here. And you can save your, your leftovers for um, other projects. Okay. 
All right, so let's see how this works. Let's go back over our recipe, okay? All right, so I have two one and a quarter inch squares. I have three portrait, um, two and a half by one and a quarter, okay? And then I, you know, I can always use the back if I need to. And then I have two at two and five eighths by one and a quarter for landscape. Okay, did I say that right? Portrait, landscape, square. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my card base and this is cut four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and one half. Okay, and so I've got that ready. And you can, I'll show you an alternate way to do this, but I'm gonna put these pieces directly onto the card front, okay? And so we're going to do the arranging first to get it looking like we want. Okay, so it's going to be about an eighth of an inch up and an eighth of an inch over. You don't have to measure it, just eyeball it, okay? And I'm gonna try this one right here. All right, so now here I need some of these two and a half inch pieces. And let's see what we have here. I'm gonna try this because, I don't know, that's cute too. But let's just try this. I ended up using that before, that little um, plaid. So there, okay, now let's see. Hmm, I think I want some more, I think I want this one here, but I think I'm gonna need some more of the plaid. I like it underneath there. But let me, let me see if I have another piece I can cut with the plaid. My goodness, did I use all of that? Where is it? Oh, it's the back of this. There it is. So I want another two and a half inch piece, I think right here, so I'm gonna cut that. So you see how you can play around with it? And this is really like, you know, if you wanna make a quick card, you know, and you don't really care what the pattern looks like, you know, it's, you can just put them wherever. But I, when I'm doing this, I'm a little bit more persnickety about it than usual because I like for the colors to try to be balanced a little bit. Okay, I like that. Then let's take our two and five eighths. That goes here and here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this. And uh, you could make a template where you cut this and glue it on a piece of cardstock, and you know that these three, okay, are the two and a half by one and a quarter, and these two are the two and five eighths pieces, okay, and of course the square. So let's uh, put this like this. Isn't that pretty? Looks like a quilt. I wanted to uh, try to, at some point, where you can mount this on, and I've done it, on a piece of base, uh, basic white, and then run it, glue it all down, let it dry, and then run it through an embossing folder, and it gives it that texture. Really pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and glue this down. Okay. I need to change my blade in my trimmer. When you start get little frayed edges like that, mm -hmm, that's what that means. Now when gluing these, you want to start with the outer parts. It's a little easier like that. So I'm going to do the two squares. Okay. Now, let me see. Did 
Jackie would like putting these together because he loves puzzles, and that's what this reminds me of, a puzzle. So, you know, you think about all of our designer papers and how it would all look different according to what the designer paper are. It was designer papers are, excuse me. Now this base is in Lost Lagoon. It's one of our returning colors. It was an in color years back. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and do this one. So to make this easier on yourself, okay, Try, you could use papers that don't have any directionality, and then you can mix and match very easily. Okay, so it's just a little tip, but I don't mind doing this. It's kind of fun to kind of slow down and create. Okay. more glue and we have it okay so I think where did I see this I think it was Julie DiMatteo sweet girl and I thought I have got to do that okay so now that's it Okay, and we can finish the inside. So let me show you, I kind of keep the outside kind of simple because I want this to shine. But uh, I am going to use a sentiment from the Crafting With You set. So let me see if I can find my ink. I'm using Sending You a Handmade Hug because I thought it would look real pretty right here. But I'm going to use one of this label right here. It's from the um, Something Fancy dies that was in our last, uh, the spring catalog. But I thought it fit just, just perfect right in there. So I'm going to use Lost Lagoon and stamp it right here on this basic white. And then I'm going to run it through my mini stamping cut and boss machine. Okay, get some of this out of the way here. I'll have all these details on my blog when this is posted on there, okay? And like I say, you just mix and match. Okay, let's put this here. And then Here's one of the labels. See how that's just a really pretty fit? I'm gonna, that's post-it tape. I got it on Amazon. And I'm going to stagger my plates a little bit to make that a little easier to roll through. Let's see how we did. Okay, looks good. All right, put that up there and move my little machine out of the way. And I guess I wanted to mention this, like thicknesses of the Stampin' Cut Embossed Machine are different from machine to machine. And I experimented with mine to see, this is actually the embossing plate, but mine cuts better if I use that on the bottom, and then my two cutting plates here with the die in between, and if you stagger these ends where it's not that full thickness going through at the same time, okay, that's what works for me. So I mean, I have on another one I have, a white one, I can use the cutting plate and stagger them and it's fine, but with this one, I have found that that embossing plate on the bottom of the cutting plates works for me. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this right here. 
So, love this sentiment, a handmade hug. That's what a card is, right? Okay, and then I have these um, iridescent gems that carried over, and I thought these would be really pretty for the Lost Lagoon. And I think I'm gonna put two little ones, one on each side. Um, let me find my, somewhere, my take your pick tool has disappeared. So let me use this. Okay, I think, I'm just gonna put one on each side. And normally I use my gems in threes, except for when I'm like bracketing something, you know, doing a, an edge there. Okay, so now uh, let's talk about what we wanna do on the inside. Let me see what I have, a piece of basic white here. And it needs to be four and five and one quarter. So let's put that. And then how about if we use some of these scraps? Right. Okay, so I like this. I like that floral. Let's see. I like that. I think I'm gonna cut a thin strip of this one to put along the bottom. And let's do three quarters of an inch. Okay. And then let's take and just go across the bottom like that. I like it because it has all of the colors in it. Okay, so I'm gonna just put some blue going across here. And I'm gonna snip off the excess. So on the, the day that I'm recording this is the same day I did my live last week, which is, it's a Thursday. And if you watch that, you knew that I had some issues and I had to use my iPad. Well, I was still having issues later in the day. So I didn't want to chance it. So I'm just recording this and going to post it as a premiere on YouTube. So that's, if you're watching this when it goes live as a premiere, you are on YouTube. I'll have a link on Facebook though, in case you don't find it. Okay, see how pretty that is? Okay, so I'm not putting any sentiment on the inside because the outside sentiment um, kind of leaves it open for what you can use the card for. You know, sending you a handmade hug, hope you feel better soon, happy birthday, or you know, however I wanna use it, okay? So let me show you the first one I made. I use this from Courage and Faith, Be of Good Courage, and I use some of our brush brass butterflies. And you see I copied my pattern exactly because that was my favorite way. Okay, so let's take a look at another couple of samples. Okay, this one I did with the masterful, Masterfully Made Designer Series Paper, and you see how I mounted it on a four by five and a quarter piece of white. And so the spaces in between the papers are more like one sixteenth of an inch rather than one eighth of an inch on these, okay? So you can do it like that too. I love how this is like torn, it's a photo, photograph of torn strips of paper, it's pretty cool. And on this one, since I had a light area, I, I just stamped in berry burst over that fresh freesia piece and it shows up just fine. I haven't done the finish, finishing on that one, but I, I love that paper and the brightness of it. Thought it made a good birthday card. And here's another using the Zoo Crew paper. I love this little raccoon. And I use this sentiment from, um, it's from the stamp set, something fancy um, stamp set. I didn't forget your birthday. I'm just stretching out the celebration. So what he, I did here, this is from that um, Something Fancy stamp set. 
I think that's the name of it. And then I cut the raccoon and the little confetti dog out of the designer paper. And then that designer paper, you know, has animals on one side and then black and white prints on the other. And so I just had, to, I used, I cut a one and a quarter inch strip by 12, one and a quarter by 12 of each pattern. And I just used, I repeated the stars for the corner, okay? So isn't that cute with that little raccoon and a little bit of our black and white check ribbon, gingham ribbon? On this, I just stamped it and fussy cut around it and then backed it with a black piece so it would stand out against that white. And this one, I just put the white on white, but I did the same here on that sentiment. Okay, so I hope you will give this patchwork uh, technique a try. It's fun to do. Uh, really way, really nice way to show off our beautiful pattern paper. And uh, remember about my getaway, birthday getaway giveaway with my craft candy on the blog. Two ways, I'll have all the details on the blog on the 4th. And also it'll be in my, um, it was in my newsletter, should have been yesterday, if you're on my mailing list. So, and if you're not on my mailing list, you can get on that. So you can get all the information in a timely manner uh, and get it on my blog at inkandinspirations.com. There's a little box, you just fill it out. I just send you good information, good project ideas, and I hope you'll join us there. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm hoping to be sharing pictures of our travels on Facebook and Instagram. So I'm on, find me there, Ink and Inspirations, and I will talk to y'all again soon. Have a great day and a great week. Take care. Bye-bye.